Hello and welcome to this, the Royal Historical Society Prize Awards. Uh, my name is Dr Andrew Smith. Um, I'm one of the honorary co-directors of communications uh, here at the RHS. Now, normally we would be delighted to welcome you to Bloomsbury to celebrate the absolutely wonderful scholarship um, that you're going to be introduced to tonight and that you'll hopefully have seen a little bit of so far with some of our author videos. However, times being what they are, Bloomsbury is locked down to us uh, and instead Instead, we welcome you here to what at least I am starting to call Zoomsbury um, for our online celebration of these prizes. Now, there's a huge amount of work that goes in both to the production of this absolutely fantastic scholarship throughout the year, but also to the actual judging of all of this work. So we are delighted to bring together all of the judges' comments on this fantastic range of scholarship that we are here to celebrate tonight. So thank you for joining us and um, please stay tuned and um, we're going to work through our awards and have some judges read out prizes and hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about those books as well. So without any further ado, I'm going to uh, hand off to uh, my uh, colleague, the president of the RHS, Professor Margot Finn, um, who will be um, giving you a formal welcome to tonight's proceedings. And so without any further ado, please, Margot. Welcome to the 2020 Royal Historical Society Annual Awards Ceremony. I'm Margot Finn, the Society's President, and it's a delight to have this opportunity to introduce you to our annual showcase of excellent historical research and teaching. Normally, we award our annual prizes at a reception in London. One of the silver linings of the global grey cloud that is COVID-19 is that working virtually allows us this year to reach a wider international audience and to provide an opportunity for many of our shortlisted and prize-winning historians to describe their work to you. Today, we celebrate excellence in history at multiple levels. Our article and book prizes focus on early career historians' achievements across the full range of time periods, topics, and methodologies. Our teaching prizes recognize excellence in supervision, as well as in pedagogic innovation, inter alia, honoring the contributions to our discipline made by former RHS President Dame Gentee Nelson. The award announced by Professor Joe Fox, Director of the Institute of Historical Research, provide a happy reminder of our many ongoing collaborations with the IHR. Among these awards, the Peter Marshall Fellowship, generously funded by another former president of the RHS, provides a salutary reminder of the key role that the Society's Fellows play in supporting the next generation of historians. I'm confident that the videos that follow will introduce you to some of the best history being undertaken in and beyond the UK. Many congratulations indeed to all of our shortlisted authors and to all of our prize winners today. Thank you very much, Margot. Now, our first prize of the evening um, is going to be the David Berry Prize 2020. Now, um, that is awarded to the best published scholarly journal article or essay on a subject dealing with Scottish history. And so I'm going to pass off to my colleague, Barbara Bombay, who will announce the winner of the David Berry Prize 2020. Barbara. Hello, my name is Barbara Bombi. I'm professor of medieval history at the University of Kent in Canterbury, and I was one of the judges for the RHS David Berry's Prize this year. Um, the prize uh, is a prize that is awarded for the best essay addressing an aspect of Scottish history, and uh, I'm delighted to announce the winner uh, for 2020. Uh, the prize goes to Scott Dempsey for uh, an article on legitimizing Edward the first adjudication of the Scottish succession, two notes on the great cause. Uh, the judges found this article technically brilliant, uh, a very good introduction to an intellectual history of the Scottish War of Independence. And uh, the piece shows uh, that taking seriously the justifications uh, that Edward offered for his actions during 1291-92, uh, sheds new light on both Scottish and English history at the time. So we were delighted to award the prize to this essay this year. We also have uh, a, a approximate assessment, and this, uh, is, uh, the, uh, this is going to the essay of Mark Williams, The Inner Lives of Early Modern Travel. 
So well done, Scott, and well done, Mark. Uh, we are delighted for your success. Thank you, Barbara. Um, our next prize tonight, the second prize we're announcing this evening, um, is going to be the Alexander Prize 2020. Um, that is for the best published scholarly journal article or an essay in a collective volume based upon original historical research. That award is going to be announced by my colleague, um, Alex Green. And so, over to you, Alex. Hello, my name is Alex Green. I'm one of the two honorary co-directors of communication at the Royal Historical Society. I'm really pleased to be awarding the Alexander Prize for the best published scholarly journal article or essay in a collective volume based on original historical research. I'm delighted to announce that the 2020 Alexander Prize is awarded to Mira Gold for an article, Ancient Egypt and the Geological Antiquity of Man, 1847 to 1863, which appeared in the History of Science. The judges felt that Mira's article told a fascinating story in an engaging manner, one that drew in a number of different fields of inquiry and primary sources to demonstrate the ways in which the study of antiquities and the natural sciences were closely intertwined through the work of key individuals and the analysis of particular places, notably ancient Egypt. The article is both rich in its scholarship and broad in its ambition. Importantly, it reached beyond its particular subject to engage with wider debates and about the generation of knowledge and the relationship between Europe and the wider world. The Alexander Prize runner-up for 2020 is Ian Stewart for an article entitled The Mother Tongue, Historical Study of the Celts and Their Languages in 18th Century Britain and Ireland, which appeared in Past and Present. Thank you very much. Um, and so we are going to announce our third prize of the evening, and that is the Rhys Davies Prize 2020. And that is awarded for the best dissertation submitted um, as part of a one year full time or two year part time postgraduate master's degree in any United Kingdom Institute of Higher Education. And so with no further ado, I will pass through to, in fact, it's myself. Um, and so over to you, uh, Andrew Smith, to announce the winner of the Rhys Davies Prize 2020. Andrew. Hello, my name is Dr Andrew Smith. Um, I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Chichester and I'm also one of the uh, honorary directors of communications at the Royal Historical Society. But I'm speaking to you today in my role as one of the judges of the RHS Rhys Davies Prize for Best MA Dissertation. We had some wonderful entries this year and the judges found it fantastic to read through these really exceptional dissertations in a very, very competitive field. However, what I'm here to, say, to announce to you today is, first of all, the Proximia Chesset, the runner-up, and then the winner of those prizes. Now, um, the, uh, the Proximia Chesset, the runner-up, um, is awarded to Robert Thompson of Southampton uh, for a thesis entitled The True Physicians Here Are the Padres, British Christian Army Chaplains and the Liberation of Bergen-Belsen. Now, uh, the judges felt that this piece sketched the ways in which the horror of the concentration camps shattered the illusion of a clean peace and set out to revisit a neglected perspective on this well-studied and significant event. Um, the judges thought the subject of the piece was nuanced, where with these chaplains crossing a number of different categories, as the author made very clear, and that this lent an interesting hook to the piece. The study was sensitively conducted and skillfully realised, um, recognising different categories of agency and offering a humane assessment of the experience of these horrific events and of their aftermath. Um, the thesis had a good archival basis of unpublished contemporary reflection, contextualised with published memoirs and scholarly work. And it was really a fantastic piece of work. So um, very well done, Robert, uh, and congratulations. Uh, the winner of the Rhys Davis Prize um, for the best MA dissertation, which we are delighted to announce, uh, was Alexandra Wingate of the IES at the School of Advanced Studies at the University of London for a thesis entitled Prosigue la, Le la Libreria, Understanding Late 17th Century Navarrese Book Culture through a Lorenzo Coroneo's Bookstore. Uh, and apologies for my pronunciation uh, of uh, 17th century Navarrese uh, was uh, a touch off. Um, the judges felt this was an absolutely fantastic piece um, and we were unanimous on ranking this uh, the very top entry, which we thought was really a, a, a joy to read. Um, 
Judges felt that this was excellent work which undertook a close book history whilst also making a clear case for its wider significance. And with an exceptionally strong archival basis, um, this thesis presented an interesting case study using the inventory of a bookstore around which to build the rest of the study. This made for an engaging read and gave the thesis a really strong spine. Um, this was, there was an interesting use of visuals um, throughout which helped the reader understand the figures but also visualise information about the context. The examiners were also impressed that it set out a meaningful intervention for future studies. Um, it's a fantastic thesis, so congratulations, Alexandra. Um, I think you've got some work that you can be really very proud of, and the judges were very, very impressed. So congratulations to our winner, congratulations to our runner-up. Thank you very much to all our entrants. We can reassure that this was a fantastic uh, field of work, um, and thank you very much. Cheers. Okay, thank you, Andrew. And um, we're going to move on now to our book prizes. Um, this first of our book prizes um, that we'll be announcing the winner of tonight is the Gladstone Prize. Um, now, the Gladstone Prize is intended to celebrate a first book um, which deals primarily with a topic not related uh, to, to British or Irish history published in the UK. Um, now, that is going to be announced by my colleague Oleg Benesh, um, who I believe uh, is uh, out and about uh, somewhere interesting. And so, without any further ado, to announce the winner of the Gladstone Prize 2020, over to you, Oleg. Hello, I'm Oleg Benesh. And I'm speaking today as a representative of the Gladstone Prize Committee of the Royal Historical Society. And I'm standing here in front of York Minster, um, more specifically in the shade of the Roman Column. And I think this is a fitting venue to announce the winner of this year's Gladstone Prize, um, Caelan Davenport's A History of the Roman Equestrian Order, published by Cambridge University Press in 2019. Um, this is a wonderful book covering more than a thousand years of ancient history. It draws on a wide variety of textual and material sources using both archaeological and sociological methods. It draws on materials in several modern and ancient languages and really discusses not only how the equestrian order changed over this millennium that it discusses, but also how Roman society itself changed and was influenced by the changes in the equestrian order. It was a very um, close competition again this year, but this was very much a deserving winner of the 2020 Gladstone Prize. Thanks, Oleg. Uh, I'm delighted to see that we have the winner of the Gladstone Prize, Caelan Davenport, dialing in from Germany. Yes, as we speak. Um, um, congratulations, Caelan. Hello. Uh, I'm absolutely delighted to be named as the winner of uh, the 2020 uh, Gladstone Memorial Prize uh, by the Royal Historical Society uh, for my book, A History of the Roman Equestrian Order. I'd very much like to thank uh, the judges uh, for judging my book uh, worthy of this prize uh, amongst a fantastic uh, shortlisted uh, field of books. And I'd also like to thank uh, the William Gladstone Memorial Trust uh, for funding the prize as well. Uh, the book began life as um, a doctoral thesis completed at the University of Oxford, and I'm very grateful to the trustees of the John Crampton Travelling Scholarship uh, for funding uh, my time as a DPhil student at Oxford. And of course to my supervisor, uh, Professor Alan Bowman, uh, for all his support and guidance uh, when I was a student and in the years since then. The book was published uh, by Cambridge University Press, and I owe a debt of gratitude uh, to the Classics Commissioning Editor, uh, Dr. Michael Sharp, uh, and all his team uh, for showing such faith in the project um, and seeing it through uh, to completion. I owe uh, many thanks uh, to a number of institutions um, in addition to Oxford, uh, particularly uh, the British School at Rome, uh, my former employer, uh, the University of Queensland, um, and my current institution, uh, Macquarie University, uh, which have all uh, helped the book uh, financially um, and in many other ways. I'm grateful to um, all my uh, academic supporters um, over the years, uh, my examiners, uh, referees, uh, and friends and colleagues um, who have read uh, various uh, chapters um, and excerpts of the work and provided me uh, with um, helpful advice and criticism. 
uh, finally, uh, I'd like to thank uh, my wife Megan um, and my parents for all their love and support um, over many, many years. Our next book prize um, is for the Whitfield Prize. Um, and that deals with our first book, which is primarily focusing on British and Irish history. Um, now, I'm going to hand over to one of my colleagues, Adam Budd, who will be announcing the winner of the Whitfield Prize 2020. Over to you, Adam. My name is Adam Budd. I am the chair of this year's RHS Whitfield Prize Jury 2020. And we are delighted to recommend that the Royal Historical Society award this year's prize to Neve Gallagher for her outstanding monograph, Ireland and the Great War, A Social and Political History, which is now out with Bloomsbury. The jury agreed that this is a bold and engaging intervention in the historiography of Irish Catholic involvement in British and allied action during the Great War. Dr. Gallagher's sophisticated interpretation of the home front in towns across the island of Ireland enables us to appreciate the ways in which individuals, families, businesses, civic and political leaders and their supporters understood allied war aims and the reasons they contributed and remembered their sacrifice and their trauma. We are particularly impressed by the author's inclusion of sources from diasporic communities as far away as Australia and Nova Scotia and by the book's relevance for current efforts to reconsider Irish national identity during the years before and after 1916. This book is richly detailed and illustrated throughout. It is an unusually substantial contribution to the social and political history of Ireland and of Irish communities abroad. We send our congratulations, all of us here at the Royal Historical Society, and we hope that colleagues will purchase the book, read the book, enjoy it, draw upon it for their research and for their teaching. Congratulations again, Dr. Gallagher. Thanks, Adam. And oh, if I'm hearing right just now, we can actually go live to Neve Gallagher in person, the winner of the Whitfield Prize 2020. Okay, uh, congratulations, Neve. Wow, where do I even begin? I'm so thrilled about this award. Uh, thank you so much to the Royal Historical Society. You've really made my day. And this is a fantastic and a 10 year project. So thank you so much. Um, really, it's truly fantastic. I want to congratulate the other shortlisted authors as well. Uh, Rob, Francis, Kieran, Charlie and Joanna. I'm really looking forward to reading your books. Um, so congratulations on your success as well. I do want to thank a few people who've helped to make this whole project possible. Eugenio Biagini, thank you very much for all of your help over the years and for your steadfast encouragement to Lucy Delap for your boundless energy and constant help and support in this project and others. I'm truly grateful. Uh, to the Institute of Historical Research for helping me to fund the cost of some of the images that are in this book and to the team at St. Catherine's College, particularly Colin Higgins for helping me put them together as well. I'm truly grateful. And to Bloomsbury, um, we've made a book and we're very proud of it and it's doing well. So this is our success and um, I'm truly grateful for all of the help. And lastly, of course, to my, my family and to my wonderful partner, William, thank you so much for all of your help and your support and your encouragement and everything I'll never be able to repay back. I'm truly grateful. This is the first work of Irish history that has ever won the Whitfield Prize. Um, so that's really exciting in itself and hopefully will inspire some others. And hopefully it won't be the last. Um, in normal times, I'd love to collect this in person, but of course we cannot, but I'm very happy to accept it virtually. And thank you once again to the Royal Historical Society for this fantastic opportunity and achievement. Um, I'm really, really thrilled. Thank you, and I hope you all enjoy the book. Thank you very much. Now, that's our, our book prizes for this evening. And next we move on to celebrate our teaching prizes. Now, one of the key aims of the RHS is to promote the vitality of historical research, but you don't get vital historical research or researchers without outstanding teaching. And the RHS celebrates the best in teaching and wants to promote and support uh, great historical teaching wherever it can be found. And so we have our two RHS teaching prizes uh, this evening. Um, the Jinty Nelson Award for Inspirational Teaching and Supervision in History and the Royal Historical Society Innovation in Teaching Awards. And now I can think of no one better to, um, to celebrate these prizes um, than my colleague Peter de Senna. And so without any further ado, I'll pass over to Peter to announce the winner of our RHS Teaching Awards 2020. Peter.
Good afternoon, my name is Peter Decina. I'm one of the RHS Council members and I'm the Chair of the Awards Committee for the two teaching awards. And I'm really sorry I can't be with you uh, synchronously today, but I'm really happy on behalf of the RHS to be able to announce the awards. The RHS really values the scholarship of teaching and learning and excellent, excellent teaching. And uh, for that reason we have two awards, the Ginty Nelson Award and also the Innovative Teaching Award. These are really important to us. Now, um, unusually this year, there has been such a high standard that the adjudicators weren't able to um, not award, if you like, uh, a runners-up prize. So as well as a winner, we have a runner-up in each category. So I'm really very happy to announce the winner of the Ginty Nelson Award, who is Marjorie Harper, the University of Aberdeen, uh, with the runner-up being John Cooper from the University of York. And the winner of the Innovative Teaching Award this year is Tim Peacock, University of Glasgow and the runner-up is Jessica Van Horsen from Leeds Beckett University. A full citations of their work is available online but I'm pleased that in this year of pandemic pedagogies that uh, so many of them were engaging very very effectively with the digital world and we'll be asking them and others to disseminate their excellent practice in the RHS's forthcoming teaching portal. Again many congratulations to all of you. Thank you very much, Peter. What a wonderful range of material we've seen this evening. Um, and thank you very much to our judges for working through all of those fantastic entries. Now we've celebrated research, we've celebrated teaching, we've seen a wonderful range of historical research on display. I'm going to hand over to my colleague, uh, Professor Joe Fox at the Institute of Historical Research, um, who is going to announce uh, the winners of the IHR prizes and the recipient of the joint IHR RHS fellowships. And so without any further ado, uh, over to you, Joe. Thank you. I'm Joe Fox. I'm the director of the Institute of Historical Research in London, and it's my great pleasure to announce the winners of the Pollard Prize 2020. The Pollard Prize is awarded for best seminar paper given at the IHR by a doctoral student or early career researcher. The winner of the Pollard Prize 2020 is Mimi Goodall for a paper on sugar in British America at the Food History Seminar. Mimi is a DPhil student at St Peter's College, Oxford, researching the consumption of sugar in 17th century British Atlantic. The Pollard panel commented, this is a beautifully written, innovative paper, making clear, convincing and important points about sugar availability much earlier and to a wider socio-economic group than previously thought in North America. The author uses fascinating sources and comes to new perspectives. The Proxime Accessit is awarded to Jack David Sargent for a paper entitled Publicity, Authority, and legal radicalism at John Lilburn's treason trial 1649 at the British History in the 17th Century Seminar. Jack is a PhD candidate in early modern British history at University College London. His thesis focuses on the performative and aesthetic aspects of politics in the English Revolution 1642 to 1649. The Pollard panel commented this is a powerfully argued, gritty and impressive case for Lilburn's stress on publicity as a means of asserting the legitimacy of popular sovereignty. It's excellent on the traditional rhetoric of publicity and on the crowd's role in history. It's richly researched and argued. Both articles will be published in the IHR's journal, Historical Research. Congratulations to you both. I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Sir John Neill Prize in Early Modern British History. The Neill Prize is awarded annually to a historian in the early stages of her or his career. And the winner this year is Laura Flanagan for her essay, Signed, Stamped and Sealed, Delivering Royal Justice in Early 16th Century England. The judges commended this as an elegant revisionary account of the working of aspects of royal justice in the reigns of Henry VIII and his father, drawing productively on the author's extensive research in the records of the Tudor Court of Requests. 
Looking closely at the use of the so-called wet and dry stamps of the royal signature on legal and other documents, the essay shows that it was used much more routinely to streamline processes and project royal authority and involvement in the exercise of justice than has been claimed. Laura is a third year Cambridge Trust and Newnham College PhD candidate working on the political and legal culture of the late 15th and early 16th centuries. Her thesis is on justice in the courts of request, 1483 to 1538. Congratulations, Laura. It's my great pleasure to announce the RHS IHR Doctoral Fellowships. First, the RHS Centenary Fellows. There are two fellows this year. The first is Elizabeth Chant for a thesis entitled Horizon on Horizon, representing the Patagonian natural environment 1774 to 1992. This thesis analyzes the evolution of representations of Patagonia using a diverse body of material, including cartography, photography, literature, and voyage accounts. Elizabeth is completing her PhD at UCL under the supervision of Claire Lindsay and Zoltan Biedermann. Her project approaches Patagonia through the lens of environmental history, exploring how both continental and maritime Patagonia were constructed as objects of geographical and scientific knowledge in the early modern world, and how this understanding developed after the Age of Revolutions. The second RHS Centenary Fellow is Adele Kernes for a thesis entitled Imagined Calabria, Narratives of Power and Community in Italo-Greek Hagiography. Adele's thesis is about stories and how they shape communities. Adele is a research student at St John's College, Oxford, under the supervision of Catherine Holmes and Chris Wickham. Her dissertation is a study of a corpus of hagiographical texts which were produced in southern Italy between the 10th and 12th centuries about Greek-speaking holy men who lived in the Byzantine province of Calabria between the 9th and 12th centuries. And now to announce the RHS Marshall Fellows. Again, there are two Marshall Fellows this year. The first is Sandeep Khanna for a thesis entitled The Birth of a Technological Nation, Technical Education in Colonial and Postcolonial India. Sandeep's thesis focuses on the development of technical education from 1880 until 1958 in colonial and postcolonial India. He is undertaking research as a PhD candidate at King's College London under the supervision of John Wilson and David Edgerton. The work explores how Indians interacted with, imitated and invented different forms of technology through their pursuit of technical education. Our second Marshall Fellow this year is Siddhito Mitra for a thesis entitled Conspiracies of Consent, the Middlemen in 19th Century Indian Indenture. Siddhito is working on Indian indentured labour in the 19th and early 20th century with specific focus on the recruiting agents involved in the system. Siddhipto is a PhD student at Royal Holloway, University of London, under the supervision of Francis Robinson. His thesis offers a fresh perspective of these agents as flesh and blood characters press between the demands of the planters and the state on the one hand and their own livelihood on the other. And he addresses the issue of consent, which has been the cornerstone of debate in this field. Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you very much to you for watching. And um, We've had a wonderful range, as I've said, of material that we've looked over tonight, and hopefully you've enjoyed seeing some of the best um, that history has to offer in 2020. Now, we very much hope that you look after yourself. We hope that you continue to engage with the society's work um, and that you'll join us in thanking both our judges and our entrants. Now, thank you to all of our judges, to Imogen Evans and Sue Carr and Kat Foxhall for the wonderful work they've put in at ministering and making possible all of the uh, work around these book prizes. And thank you also to all of our entrants. The judges I can personally attest have enjoyed reading through all of this wonderful history. And thank you to you, the viewers, for continuing to support history, for continuing to engage with the society's work. 
um, even in difficult times. Now, thank you very much to everyone, uh, and uh, I hope you have a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>